much due to what experts say is caused by three-week COVID-19 lockdown in parts of the country. In international news this evening, World Health Organization says a meeting next week will discuss with health leaders from across the world how to defeat COVID-19. Well, I have an interactive on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSTV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Let's settle for the details now. And the Supreme Court, by majority decision, has dismissed a suit challenging Martin Amidu's age as a special prosecutor. Reasons for the 5 2 decision, according to the Chief Justice, Justice Enim Yabua, will be made available at the registry of the Supreme Court. Here's a report by Godfrey Tanam. Former Deputy Attorney General and as well John Mahama Administration Dominic Aine filed the action and the Supreme Court challenging Martin Amidu's age did not qualify him to be appointed as Ghana Special Prosecutor. In his application to the APS Court, he sought reliefs, among other things, a declaration that by a true and proper interpretation of Articles 1901D, 19914 and 295 of the 1992 Constitution, the required age of all holders of public offices created pursuant to Article 1901D is 60 years, anyhow, not beyond 65 years. But the Attorney General, represented by the Deputy AG, responded and urged the Supreme Court to dismiss the suit, saying it was born out of narrow, inadequate, and literal construction of the scope of the application of Article 199 of the Constitution. Earlier, the deputy AG had argued that Martin Amidu was not the proper party to the suit. Godfrey Yabuadame also stated that the decision to appoint Martin Amidu was taken in the course of the official duties of the president and AG and Martin Amidu can therefore not be a party to the suit. He then urged the court to dismiss the suit. The court agreed with the deputy AG and subsequently struck out the name of Martin Amidu as defendant in the suit. Dominic Ayene, after the judgment, indicated he will go for the document at the registry and study it, but stated a review will not be considered in the matter. Unless you can show um, that the court erred, you know, grievously, and that uh, the fact that the court erred, you know, resulted in a miscarriage of justice, it should not be possible for the court to take a second look at this ruling. I don't want us to come back re-arguing our case. Unfortunately, the precedent that is going to be set um, will allow for appointments of persons who are over the age of 65 years. Uh, persons who are 70 years of age can be appointed into the public service after they have retired at the age of 60 um, and not giving our young people the opportunity. The majority who ruled in favor of the state include the Chief Justice Justice Eniniabua, Justice Bafu Boni, Justice Mafu Sao, Justice Nene Amagashi, and Justice Professor Ni Ashikote. Justice Suluk Badigbi and Justice Agnes Doji ruled for Dominic Ayene. The decision of the seven member panel will be made available on May 14. Godfrey Tanam, TV3 News, Accra. Well, so the case count, Ghana's case count of COVID-19 keeps increasing and the latest coming in, some 281 new cases have been added to uh, the tally now. And as you can see right there, from 5,400, and uh, that's 5,112, that's 27 to 5,408. So now there's about 281 increase to the previous case count of 5,127 now what we do have is 5,408. That's up by 281. That's what you see right there on your screen. The update came in not too long ago. Also, the death cases have increased by two. That's from 22 up to 24. That's also what we do know right now with respect to the recoveries as well. has gone up to 514. And uh, you also look at the uh, regional breakdown. The Greater Accra region has crossed the 4,000 mark uh, that we see right there. So now the Greater Accra region has 4,147 out of the new case count. That's about almost 82% of the total cases. That's 4,147. The Ashanti region has 726 cases uh, recorded there and there's a lot of focus on Obuasi 
because of what's happening over the period. Uh, on Tuesday, they recorded 100 new cases over 24 hours after voluntary testing was done. And that has been traced to a couple going into the central market in Obwasi. The central region also has 192 cases now. It's in region 99, western region 61, and western north region 56. Voto region 34 cases as we speak. Uh, the upper east region also has 26 uh, cases as recorded. Oti region 24, the upper west region... Uh, has 21 cases now. But the northern region, if you recall, we knew about this 19 cases as far back as the weekend. Over the weekend, the northern regional director of health services indicated that the cases had risen from 16 to 19. Now we have the update today, being Wednesday, and the, the death case that's also been recorded there of the 80-year-old uh, uh, food vendor there. The northeast region, two cases, Bono region, one, Savannah, Ahafo, and Bono East regions, are still yet to record any cases. Now, if you look at the hotspots map, is getting that's at least for the this is for the Greater Accra region, is scattering also many places that is getting worrying. Now, the Adentan, that's it, Lankwantanan, Medina area that covers Adenta, Baleshi is still the biggest uh, yellow spot you see there, uh, and it keeps increasing in size. Now we have Lejokuku. Uh, also, the Bema Camp area, Mamobi, Ayido, uh, Green Hill. We also have Abekoma still expanding there, Ofanko. Now, Ga West also has captured there, Bawe uh, also captured there as well. And Pokwasi, parts of Pokwasi as well, captured in this uh, hotspot map on the Ghana Health Services website. Dome as well is captured there. So that's what's happening, uh, Aisha, uh, with this hotspot map. Initially, if you recall, this uh, area was the biggest. Now we have more other areas now captured in uh, this hotspot map. So that is the latest coming through. The, the new cases, 5,408, up by 281. Let's now go to the Ashanti region where there is an easy calm in Kumasi as COVID-19 cases in Obwase continue to rise. Residents fear the proximity of the mining district may accelerate the spread of the virus. Over 5,000 cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in Ghana. Obuasi remains the hotspot in the Ashanti region with over 300 cases. The astronomical growth in cases is a worry to many residents in Kumasi. The closeness of the two districts perhaps justifies the concerns of people living in Kumasi. <laughs> We interact with a whole lot of people on a daily basis. We are really scared of contracting the disease. Some residents of Oboase come to Kumasi to work. It's really scary without the nose marks. We advise all to adhere to the safety protocols. For some, although the government has done well in case management, more can be done to control the spread of the virus. Some health experts have called for an imposition of a lockdown on Obwase. Meanwhile, the wearing of nose masks is still a major challenge for some people. In the central business district, most people wear the mask while others walk about without any protection. Also, the northern region's COVID-19 case count has risen, as I did show you earlier, from 16 to 19, with the 80-year-old street vendor losing her life. Now, she reported to the Tamale Central Hospital and was initially being managed as a pneumonia case, but later tested positive for COVID-19. Now, this disease, this 80-year-old this uh, food vendor who has already been buried by the COVID-19 burial team in the region, had no travel history. Now, according to the Northern Regional Health Director, Dr. John Betson, the disease uh, sells oranges by the roadside, which means she has been interacting with lots of customers and that where it is believed she might have picked up 
uh, the virus. That's, that's the, the, the seriousness of the situation. Uh, the situation has necessitated an immediate contact tracing in both her home and where she sells her oranges. Dr. Betson also indicated that some 29 health workers who came into contact with her have undergone mandatory self-isolation while they wait for results of their samples which are being tested at the Tamale Public Health and Reference Laboratory. So that's what's happening in uh, the, the northern region and that's the seriousness of the situation and the concern there is how we're going to be able to do any effective contact tracing to be able to trace everyone who came into contact with this uh, orange seller, 80 year old who is no more. Now I've been joined via Skype by Dr. Michael Owusu. He is a virologist, a lecturer and also a researcher at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research on the laboratories testing COVID-19 samples. Doc, good evening to you. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. This is the situation in the northern region. A food vendor test positive, 80-year-old dies. How difficult is it uh, for these people to do contact tracing of everyone who came into contact with this person who sells food by the roadside? Yeah, uh, good evening to, to you and good evening to, to all your viewers. So uh, this would be quite difficult, and um, especially when the person is actively engaged in services where uh, he or she interacts with many other people. Uh, ideally, if uh, the woman uh, were to be in a mask, a nose mask, you will expect that the transmissibility may be low and the likelihood that other people may not be infected if, if, they, if they come into contact with such a person. But then... I'm not sure whether she was observing all the precautionary measures, which would mean that if she was doing this without any form of mask, then you will expect uh, this to become very difficult, especially in contact tracing. Um, because of recall bias, uh, even when the people are alive, you have to ask them how many people they have been in contact with to help you trace them. In most of the time, this will not be 100% effective. You may succeed in getting 50 to 60 percent of the people, and the 40 other 40 percent of the rest uh, of the of the other people will go around and also start with another transmission chain or another cycle. So, when the person is no more, uh, it, it's difficult. You wouldn't know who to talk to because the index case is, is already gone. How the person came into contact with with, the, with other people who gave it to him, th this is really going to be very very difficult. And, and I think that. These are some of the things that you grapple with when you enter into the fourth phase of this disease where you have active community spread of the virus. And therefore, tracing who gave to what and, and how other people contracted it is, is a big challenge. And then also to know that a lot of the people moving about are asymptomatic carriers. So I'm not sure. I'm sure that somebody just uh, came around the woman, bought some oranges. The person was fine. But then here is a vulnerable woman. 80, over 80 year old that, that, that the virus has taken her life away. So the whole strategy for this, uh, dealing with this, with this outbreak or this pandemic is to protect the vulnerable in the society. Mm. Left to the young people who are strong and asymptomatic, there wouldn't be a problem. But then if you have old people among us, how do we protect them? And which will mean that as, so, so far as the young people are not adhering to the measures, they continue to put our old men, our old women at risk. And this is not where we want to, what we want to uh, get to. Mm. There's another situation as well in the Ashanti region where you are, Obuasi specifically, where we understand that the spike in the cases in Obuasi was traced to a couple who visited the central market. And after that, when the uh, district decided to do voluntary testing, we were able to confirm 100 cases in one day. Now, how can you do contact tracing in, in a central market where people come in to buy, traders go home, and all of that? Yeah, this is, this is another big challenge. This is why uh, all over the world, social gathering is one major risk factor for quick transmission of the virus. But then, if the people adhere to precautions, if they put on the mask and follow the rules, you are likely to reduce this. But as you have heard already, Obuasi uh, authorities are finding it difficult to convince people to put on their mask and go about their, their normal duties. They just don't want to follow through this. And a lot of the people are young people, as, as I said earlier. A lot of them feel they are fine, but then they go about doing it. But in the marketplace, 
where people interact actively. Do, dealing with this uh, becomes difficult. Doing contact tracing, effective contact tracing, may be very difficult. And if you can recall, Obuasi had his first five cases on the, the 12th of April. So you can imagine, almost one month after that, you begin to see an increase in, in, the, in the number of cases, something close to 300. And a day, you are having 100 new cases. Just one month interval. And this, mm. the, the cases you are seeing is because we are testing. It's likely there is three or four times that number in the community True. who are all circulating. If you in have fact, to expand the testing capacity, you will see that a lot of this uh, will be there. Based on that suspicion and, and the analysis that you've just done, there are suggestions that we should consider locking down Oboase so that you, know, the, you can do the testing and know the rate of spread of the virus. Yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of factors will have to come in and a lot of assessment will have to be done. Ideally, if you have a good testing capacity and you can reach the population, then you, you will expect that this will have to be done. And, and looking at the marketplace where the people are still moving, so you, contact tracing following that will become difficult. So if you want to follow the people up, then you want them to perhaps restrict their movement then you can follow them up. But the other thing also about what we need to observe is that it's not just about the increase in the numbers. We need to weigh this against increase in hospital cases and also increase in deaths. What, what I think I'm not much aware of is that whether this increase in numbers is resulting in increase in hospital cases and resulting in deaths or people coming with unexplained uh, respiratory disease, which could be linked to COVID-19. If you have these three variables playing all together, then the urgent need for lockdown will have to be uh, will, will have to be uh, done immediately. But then, if you have one variable increasing increasing cases where you don't seem to have correlation in increasing hospital cases or increasing deaths, then you want to still uh, bring in all the other non-pharmaceutical interventions, follow them up, and see how best you can uh, enforce precautions so that you can reduce the transmission of this virus in the community. Well, Dr. Michael, also, you were concerned about the Ghana Tourism Authority's uh, earlier statement that uh, drinking bars can open for business. Well, we're getting an update on that because the statement just coming through from the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture is that food chains and restaurants operate takeout and delivery services only. Also, drinking bars remain closed and all night that's nightclubs remain closed so all nightclubs remain closed drinking bars remain closed this is the clarification from the sector minister so that sort of nullifies the ghana tourism authority's earlier statement indicating that these uh, uh drinking bars can operate for business so i'm sure you, you should be satisfied with this right now uh, very much satisfied i was much worried when when i heard the statement because we, we've had on an average two to three hundred increase in a daily increase in cases from um, the 8th of May till the 12th of May and the 30th of May. Our cases running between two to three hundred. And then if you bring in drinking bars, a lot of the time people are, are, are drink or they are drunk. Observing social distancing is almost an impossibility. You cannot enforce precautions in that environment. And a lot of them could have underlying conditions. A lot of the people who drink may have liver problems. And you already know that 91% of those who have died are, have, have comorbid conditions. So you don't want to re, um, complicate the lives of our young or old people who, are, who, who may be involved in this. So right. I think that it is a good news for us. And for me, I'm, I'm very much happy that this has been reversed. And we have to, we have to still adhere to the precautions, right. uh, begin to observe events, and wait until we enter into the decline phase before oh, we begin goodness. to touch on some of these variables. I think this is, this is what is good for us. And especially not to put pressure on the contact tracing team and the health facility. Because as you, as you relax the measures, there is more work for the health sector, more work for the health, health ministry, more work for the surveillance officers, and you don't want to put so much pressure on them. So Great. I think this is good for us, and we have to uh, be happy that they have, they have uh, removed or reversed uh, this. Thank you so much, Dr. Michael Osu, the virologist and a lecturer, also uh, a researcher at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research. Now, 10 suspects of the Ashaman police station in Accra have tested positive for COVID-19. Now, uh, the 10 were among 54 inmates who were randomly tested by the health officials. The police say the random sampling is an ongoing initiative by the police. According to them, 
They are awaiting the results of the rest while the 10 have been isolated. Some police, uh, police officers have also been taken by health officials from the police hospital. Albert Otre Boache, is the Sherman Municipal Chief Executive, has also been clarifying the situation there as well uh, in Ashaman. So that's where we are now. Let's look at some more stories there. A 21-year-old tailoring apprentice from Navrongo in the Upper East region has emerged the second jackpot winner for the Star 787 hash draw, bagging 157,500 cities. Ghana's premier mobile lottery has so far rewarded 19 players each with 20,000 cities and over a million players with amazing cash and commodity prizes. Amabi Valerius, a tailoring apprentice who hails from Mavongo in the Upper East region, has emerged the second jackpot winner for the mobile game Star 787 Hash. Participated in the mobile game for the first time, Amabi bagged home 157,000 Ghana CDs and could not hide his excitement. My friend told me about the game and he, he always played and one day he also tell me to play and i say okay then i will play i've used tenses to play so that day that i've also played and, and won i'm so happy and I'm so glad for him the focus is to expand his tailoring business i'll use the money to buy my machines and use some to to also start with my, my shop, then I will save some. Packed with the Saturday regular 787 lottery draw, there is the special Tuesday draw where 25 players pocket 200 Ghana cities as well as a special Thursday draw where three players are rewarded with 1,000 Ghana cities each. All tickets purchased for the special Tuesday, Thursday and Friday automatically qualifies for the regular jackpot draw on Saturday, May 16. This is our second jackpot winner winning 157,500 Ghana cities. The first jackpot winner won 162,950 Ghana cities and we are very proud to celebrate with them. And then this is our 19th draw since the inception of the mobile lottery star 787 hash. We urge all players out there you know, to participate, you don't know what is in store for you. You could be one of the lucky players taking home amazing prizes or probably a very huge amount as compared to what has been won already. With a minimum of five Ghana cities, one can purchase a ticket and can play at his or her convenience on all networks anywhere in Ghana. With Star 787 Hash, every player is a winner. Now, let's go back to Sky, where 10 suspects of the Sherman Police Station in Accra have tested positive for COVID-19. Josephine Entria J uh, has been to that place and she joins me via Skype. She's my colleague there. Josephine, what do we know about, about this? What's the latest? Right, Alfred, uh, uh, as you rightly told the viewers, uh, 10 suspects in a police cell in Sherman have tested positive. Uh, what is left is that uh, there were about 54 of them that they ran the test on them. The test was run by health officials who came in to undertake that. But what we understand is that this is a particular initiative that is being done by the police that is all over the greater Accra region to go around to test the inmates in the various cells so that they can know their status. Some of them are due to be sent to the prison. So... You can imagine, Alfred, if we don't test these inmates before they move in there, probably uh, we wouldn't have that. Uh, we might have a case like the 10 cases that were, which have been reported now might be going to the prison cell. So what they are doing is that uh, the rest of the 44 of them, uh, they are waiting the results from Noguchi. 
so that then they will know their status. But for the 10 that they have tested positive, they have isolated them at a different location. And then the police officers who were who are also at the station have also been tested. I'm told that there were officials from the police hospital that came in to test all the police personnel. So mm. we are also awaiting the results of these police personnel at the facility. Right. Very worrying uh, picture you paint right there. Josephine Ntia J is my colleague at uh, Vista the Ashaman Police Station. A very good evening to you. Thanks for staying with us on News 360. Time for business with me, Nana Ekria Mensa Brampa. Let's look at the inflation figures uh, for the month and it rose to, well, let's look at that. The rise in inflation has been attributed to the increase in food inflation of 14.4% following the three week COVID 19 lockdown in certain parts of Ghana. Let's get the figures in this report. Food and Non-Alcoholic Beverages Division recorded a year-on-year -year inflation rate of 14.4%. The prices that we've shared with you were picked during the lockdown period. And we went ahead to pick prices from the market after the partial lockdown um, was lifted. And this will give us an opportunity to see by comparing what happened during the partial lockdown period vis-a-vis -vis, um, when the partial lockdown had ended. For both on year-on-year -year basis and on month-on-month -month basis, we respectively see food inflation driving um, overall inflation by 60% and 82.5% um, respectively. At the regional level, the overall year-on-year -year inflation ranged from 2.3% in the Upper East region to 15.1% in the Greater Accra region. Inflation for imported goods was 4.9%, while that of local goods was 13.1%. This makes the inflation for April locally oriented. Because the borders were closed and locally produced items were surging up, we saw higher um, increases in locally produced items and that is what is accounting for the variation between imported inflation and locally produced um, inflation. This is likely to go down because of the easing mobility restriction, but we don't expect a sharp drop as we saw in terms of the surge in prices. So it's going to take um, at least three months. But how does the country ensure that prices of locally produced goods, especially farm produce, do not continue to go up? The other perspective that we may want to look at as a country is to intensify the moral suasion bit of this discussion because and still with the Ghana Statistical Service, it is warning the general public to be wary of fraudsters parading as officials of the service. According to Professor Samuel Kobneni, the unscrupulous persons demand money from unsuspecting applicants promising to secure them jobs at the Ghana Statistical Service. It's come to the notice of Ghana Statistical Service that some fraudsters are demanding monies from unsuspecting applicants who would want to work with Ghana Studies Card Service in different capacities to ensure that we cover the whole country and cover it well in terms of quality data. And some information is on the social media that we have engaged some individuals using mobile money accounts to collect money from prospective unsuspecting applicants indicating that they can offer them a job on the census or give them a place of their choice. We want to put on record that Ghana Studies Card Service, first of all, has not engaged any individual or agency to collect money from any person in the, in the hope that that person would get a job or that person would place in a district of his or her choice. Now quickly, let's look at the city's performance against the major trading currencies. Well, for the forex rates from the Bank of Ghana, it showed that the city appreciated against the pound by some 0.12%. And the city, however, depreciated against the dollar by 0.04% and to the euro by 0.05% today. 
For the banks, they kept their forex rates with regards to the dollar, the euro, and the pound sterling unchanged for today. And talking about it in terms of figures, let's look at how it fared. For the city to the dollar, we are talking about five Ghana cities, 59 pesos when you are buying it on the interbank market and it will be sold to you at five Ghana cities 60 pesos also same uh, at the interbank market for the city to the great british pound which remain unchanged of course for the interbank market rate it is being bought at six Ghana cities 97 pesos and same when it's being sold to you there for the city to the euro also at six Ghana cities 07 pesos when you're buying and it's being sold to you too at the interbank market so the figures remain unchanged same as yesterday seeing some appreciations there for the city to all of its major trading currencies now these figures would be quiet on the high when you visit the forex markets depending on where you want to exchange your money for you can log on to 3news.com i'm sure you get more news updates on that there that's about it for the business segment with me nana ikria mensa brampa right so alfred okansi is standing by to give us some uh news updates with regards to the mensha divisional command please some security issues there Thank you, thank you very much. Well, business. You're right on this because police at Menshia uh, Divisional Command are holding a 26-year-old man in custody after he allegedly assaulted his three-year-old son. The young man who had ended the relationship with the mother of the boy alleged his three-year-old damaged his phone and urinated in his bed. Take a look at this. The three-year-old who has been on admission at the Menshia Government Hospital sustained severe injuries on his back, forehead and other parts of the body. Menshia Divisional Police Commander ACP Kwekubua says the suspect, Osei Bunsu, will be processed for court in May 14. Don't let us forget that nothing is a crime is done by a person below 12 years. A three-year-old boy, what has he done to you? Your own son, what has he done to you? To warrant this. So he's in our custody, the docket is ready, and we have even sent it to uh, the prosecution unit for them to start the trial. That's what we have on our hands. Meanwhile, the Ghana NGO Coalition on the Right of the Child has pledged to help seek justice for the victim. Barry Marquisia Mankwa is national coordinator of the Child Right Coalition. All of us are very concerned and we want to support the process to ensure that the best justice is given to the child. And then also it's going to be uh, something that is going to be there so that people will learn from it that if you give it birth to a child, you don't have any other thing than to take care of the child. You don't say that I'm the one that I've given birth to the child and for that matter I can do whatever I want to do with the child. No. The survival and the development of the child is very paramount and also ensuring that the child is well taken care of is what is we need. So that is what we are looking for. Hello, good evening and welcome to the sports segment here on News 360 with me, Juliet Bewa. Now, GFA President Keto Kweku is calling for um, CALM as the association navigates the confusion on when domestic football will return. The call comes as there is growing pressure on the FA to come clear on what it intends to do with the rest of the season. Speaking on Accra Bay's Happy FM, Kurt says considerations are being made and collaborations are going on to ensure that the right protocols are guaranteed before a return. This, he says, has been going on for some time with key stakeholders. I'm working closely with uh, the medical committee led by the very experienced Dr. Baba, Dr. Percy and Dr. Kofi Ablo. Um, yeah, yeah, share all scenarios possible. Say, say, you truncate you, say, say, you cancel, say, say, you continue. The medical committee uh, share all possible scenarios to be able to advise us. And once we get that advice, I'll go to uh, the state authority, Minister of Youth and Sports, and, and engage. Moving to allay the fears of all concerned, the GFA president says any decision that will be taken will be in the supreme interest of all, indicating that a cancellation, for instance, will be grave for a lot of people in the league chain. It is true, say, uh, in certain countries, Oma cancel Oma leaks. 
It's also true, sir, in certain countries, woman can still cry. It's also true, sir, in certain countries, almost suspend the year and they are coming back. I'm sure they will put together a document for us to consider. And like I said, we'll be here. I say, 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 Now, stall on that, founder of Kim Faisal Football Club, Alhaji Karim Grusa says he stands by his suggestion for the 2019-2020 Ghana Premier League season to be cancelled. So speaking to TV3 on his widely trumpeted position, Grusa maintained that his call is one of principle. You see, the cancel of the league is must we should cancel. But me, I don't want to say anything about it because I'm the bottom of the league. But I'm preparing myself whether the league will come or not. Because I bring Serbian coach in. He watched my match. He told me, Alaji, you are positioned in this, uh, your team, the midfielder and the defense you don't have. But your attack is spec. But now he doing better, he get some place we registered. Inshallah, other league will continue or not, we will see Kim Faisal. We are thinking both, the place, welfare and the sponsorship. I'm Anita Ikea Akufu and in entertainment tonight, the Ghanaian music industry has for a while experienced artists throwing jabs at themselves. Ghanaian rap sensation and the Ubiawani master hit maker Yapono said in an interview on TV3 New Day that it is a form of growth and not personal. Rapper Solomon Edu Enchi, known as Yapono, has quickly risen to become one of Ghana's finest freestyle hip hop artists. After appearing on several local radio shows and competitions to get to where he is now, Yapono says he's got no problem with an artist whom he trained under his label throwing jabs at him. If tomorrow someone that I've trained before or someone that is just coming up sees he's the best or anything like that and he wants to throw shots at me, why should I? Why should I mind that person? The point is this for you to be the best. The Obia Wani Master Headmaker says he sees it as a challenge his colleagues are taking to better themselves and not a forum for hate. He also mentioned that he and his Uptown Energy team are ready to resist any artist that throws jabs at him. It's simple. Any stop that will throw shots at Uptown Energy we will resist quick. Happiness Collection 2020. And our young Ghanaian female disc jockey and multi-talented entertainer DJ Switch has added her voice to calls for equal access to e-learning platforms during the coronavirus pandemic. The young talent who has signed up uh, for a talent agency in the United States of America urged school children and the government schools are not benefiting. The effect of the coronavirus pandemic has led to the closing of schools indefinitely. Many schools have resorted to e-learning platforms and other avenues, but not everyone has access to these learning sites. In an interview on COVID-19 360, winner of Talented Kids Season 8, Erika Amabra Bulutando, known in showbiz as DJ Switch, highlighted the need for the various online education platforms to be made available for students in the government schools as well. Most of the private schools have online classes, but not the government school. So I will please ask the the president like the government school, how would they engage with their teachers apart from um you know, the GL television, the Ghana Learning Television, apart from that one, you know, some people want to have one-on-one -on -one interaction with their teachers. Now, away from Ghana, let's find out what's trending in the world of entertainment on E! News 60 globally. Soul singer Betty Wright has died from cancer at age 66 in her Miami home. Wright's family confirmed the death to Essence as she had been diagnosed with endometrial cancer. Wright was known for her songs like Clean Up Woman, which became a top five hit. She was an incredible writer, producer and mentor to young artists. Little 
Richard, the screaming, preening, scene stealing wild man of early rock and roll with hits like Tutti Fruity and Long Tall Sally, died Saturday at age 87. Dick Allen, his former agent, confirmed the news. Allen said little Richard died in Nashville with his brother and son by his side, and the cause of death is related to bone cancer. <laughs> That's it for entertainment. I'm Anita Ikea Kufu. Have a good evening. And that's all for tonight. But remember, like we brought you in the headlines, the World Health Organization says a meeting next week will discuss with health leaders from across the world how to defeat COVID-19. We'll be looking out for that. But that's all from us this evening. Remember to wash your hands as frequently as possible and take very good care of yourself. If you're going out, use your face mask. Be at home if you have to. My name is Saisha Yakubu. Thanks for joining us. And I am Alfred Okonse. Good evening.